You're listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I'm Pastor Josh. I would like to invite you to embark with me on a journey, a journey of biblical study. Through practical application of the Word of God, it is my prayer that you grow in greater relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Please join me as we journey to the next Stepping Stone of Faith. I'm Joshua DeNoyer, and you're watching the Stepping Stones of Faith Bible Study Time. With me today is Shannon Bale, and we're going to be going into Psalm 1. Hey, Shannon, good to see you. Hey, good to see you too, brother. Yeah. Yeah, we've been, we've been, uh, we, we're going to start in this thing. Hopefully we can do this on a regular basis if you have time to do that. I want to do a walk through the okay. Psalms. Um, uh, that way we can get, we're going to, and we're going to uh, walk through Psalm 1 today. I want to give a backstory for those of you that have never seen, never have uh, been on here before, what a walk through the Psalms looks like. A walk through the Psalms is basically where we go through a Psalm, we pray, we see what God wants us to do through a Psalm, we look at that Psalm, we study that Psalm out for a week or so, and then we come back together, we dissect it and talk about it. And I always start with Psalm, excuse me, with Psalm 1. I always start with Psalm 1, and then I move on down to whatever God leads me from that point. And I got this idea, just so it back, more of a backstory. I, I heard somebody, a missionary, tell me years ago that every fall in his, where he was at, in his area, falls, falls and springs and stuff are different in some areas. I believe for you guys it's different. Summer's different than it is here, and fall is different than it is here. But every fall where he was at, he would go through a walk through the Psalms, and he would read Psalms as the Lord would lead and study them out, and he grew in in really knowledge of the Psalms. And so I thought, well, that's really cool. I want to try that. So this is where that stems from. And so I want to try to do that with my friend Shannon today. And hopefully we can do this. If you have the time to do it, we'll do this on a regular basis. I don't know if you'll have the time to do that or not, but we'll go from week to week and see how, see how things go. How's that sound? Sounds good, brother. All Sounds right. great. Now, if you have a Bible handy, go ahead and open up with us to Psalm chapter 1. And uh, we will start there, but let's open up with a word of prayer. All right, Father, we thank you today for, Lord, your grace and your mercy. Father, we thank you for, Lord, our ability to come before you with boldness, our ability to come before you seeking knowledge with humble hearts to just gain, clean, uh, glean a greater understanding of you through your word. Father, help us as we study this word to our hearts be enlightened our souls to be enriched, and Lord, those that watch, that Father, they would be enriched, and they would be enlightened, and others would come to know you through this study. And Lord, we thank you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. Now, you, amen. Are, you are in Africa. South Africa. Botswana, in Botswana, or... Or outside Botswana. No, I'm in South Africa. We are missionaries. My wife and I, Becky, are missionaries to Botswana, Africa. But uh, we weren't able to get our, uh, the papers that we needed once we got here to get our visas. So we had to move to South Africa. And since we moved to South Africa, as everybody well knows, COVID-19 hit. And actually, the 15th of this month was supposed to be our last day in this country. But because of COVID-19, they have extended our visas here in um, South Africa to uh, July, the end of July, like July, I think July 30th or something like that. Okay. So um, we're just hoping we can get back to Botswana uh, soon. Uh, we now, now we can put in all our papers that we need to. Um, so now we're ready to go back, but, you know, the borders are closed and things are happening, you know. So it's okay, but we're get, uh, We're in Pretoria. Pretoria is a very nice place. If you ever come to South Africa, you need to visit Pretoria. Um, it's not on the coast, uh, but it's still a very nice place to be, and it's a great. We we got a wonderful missionary house we're staying in, so we're blessed, brother. All right. Well, that's wonderful. All right. That's great. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at Psalm one. Um, yeah. Shannon, go ahead and read that, and then if you have some thoughts. And then I'll interject, okay? Do, do you want me to read the whole psalm, Pastor? Go and read the whole psalm, and then we will go back verse by verse, or, or thought by thought, and interject what, uh, okay. what you, you think, okay? 
Okay, I'll just let the people know that I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, the New Spirit-Filled Life Bible, just so you all know where I'm reading from. Uh, Psalm 1, verse 1 starts, Blessed is the man who, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like chafe which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right. All right. Uh, do you, I see right off the bat, there's two sections here to this. One sure. Is, one is what happens with the righteous, one what happens with the unrighteous. Yeah. Um, and I want to bring out some things, unless you had something you wanted to bring out first. And I no, don't you want go to right steal, ahead, Josh, and, and I, I'll key off of you. And I don't want to steal your thunder if, I, if, I, if we kind of work working in the same grain here. It says, blessed is sure. the man, and I'm, and I'm reading from the modern English version. It says, "Blessed is the man who walks in the counts who who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly." Uh, we want to look at for a moment what is the ungodly. What what does mm -hmm. it mean for someone to be ungodly? Well, when you when you look at that word, you you automatically think of someone who is really bad, who is really, yeah. really you know what society would say was horrible in in society, mm -hmm. but really in 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 scriptural standing, the ungodly is just anybody who doesn't know Jesus. The ungodly mm -hmm. is anybody who says, well, I'm a moral person. I don't need to go to church. I'm, I'm statutorily in my community moral. I have a good family. I have a good, my, my children are respectful. Mm -hmm. My morals are good. I don't need to go to church. I'm going to heaven. That too is, an un, is one who is ungodly. And so if sure. you are one of these people that feel that way, I want you to know straightforward, and you know I'm straightforward when I'm on these things, and that you are ungodly. You are, you, if you were to die today, you would not be with Jesus, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. The only way you can see Jesus is by going before him, asking for forgiveness, and living your life right before him that's the only way jesus said i'm the way the truth and the life no man comes before the father comes to the father but through me now that's what ungodly is so when you uh, bless this man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly so blessed is the man the opposite of that then would be the man who walks in the counsel of god right how do we get into the council of God, Shannon. Shannon, I want to ask you: in your perspective of, of of your of your life, how does a person approach the counsel of God? What do they do to to? How do you get into walking in the counsel walking in the counsel of God? That's a very good question, Pastor Josh. Uh, I would just like to point out what counsel actually means before I even speak to it. I looked it up in my uh, in in the dictionary, and it says. It, 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 it's advice uh, somehow to get something to plan for, uh, to counsel, to purpose, to get counsel or advice, to get advice. So when we think about getting advice, we think about getting maybe financial advice, or we think about getting advice on should I buy this car or should I buy this house? You know, we want a lot of advice before we make big decisions like buying a car or buying you know, buying anything, you know, that's going to cost you thousands of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So what what I see is when it comes to counsel, there's a big difference in what the world has to offer and what God has to offer. 
And I think that's what we see here in this psalm is if we'll listen, if we'll listen to the word, if we will continue to stay in the word, it's going to give us good counsel, but not just from the word. Uh, Josh, you you know, uh, we both have some very good friends named Lawrence and Shirley Crawl. Mm-hmm. And if I ever had someone I wanted to go to counsel in, in counsel for godly counsel, those would be the people that I would regularly go to and say, what do you think about this? Can you pray about this with me? Now, I'm not saying that people that don't, that these people know Jesus. I'm not saying that people that don't know Jesus may have some decent counsel, but are they really basing that counsel off the word of God? And are they actually praying about it and maybe hearing from the Holy Spirit to say, hey, maybe they shouldn't go there on that by or, you know, something like that. So I don't shrug off uh, someone that's not a follower of Jesus. I listen to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try to build a relationship with them. But a lot of times their counsel will not hold very much um, uh, meaning to me. I'll listen to them. I'll put it into effect. I may even pray about it to see what God has to say about it. But more than likely, I'm going to seek out wise counsel for things in my life from believers and uh, my wife. I mean, she's a good person of counsel for me. She knows all about me. So that's what I think what, where the difference is, brother, is, uh, is whether they know the word and they're going to give you good counsel. And we both know it's better to have more than one person like that. Mm-hmm. We need to have many people we can come to as, as our counselors mm-hmm. that we may understand where the Lord's leading us in our life. But the mm-hmm. best one is the Holy Spirit. He's the best right. counselor. So, so what you're saying is what I'm what I'm hearing you say is that you would you would you would take counsel from someone who you would you would listen to someone who isn't necessarily a Christian, but you would take you would approach it as taking it as taking it under advisement or taking it into consideration, more as someone says to you, "Hey, I think you need to go buy that car." Boom, that's from God. I'm going to go buy that car. Whereas you would you would take that and say, "Well, I'm going to." Make sure this is from God. Take it under consideration and pray. That's what I'm hearing you say, and I think I think that's what you are saying, and and that's a good way to a good way to approach it. I don't think we should shun people's uh, advice. I think we should take it under consideration in every in every avenue, Christian or non Christian. Sure. But I think we would we would be more apt to lean toward the advice of a Christian because it should confirm some things. In our in our life, yeah, in, in our in, yeah. in in our in what we're already doing, but as far as like a non-Christian right. thing, we could take it under advisement and say, "Hey, I'm going to make sure this is of God. Pray about it and see what happens." And then you know, you're not shunning them; you're just taking it under advisement. Right. Oh. So, so that's that's really good. Now, now it says, "Walk, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers." I see this as somebody who places themselves in the same standing, a, a Christian, placing themselves in the same boat, we might say, as someone who's a non-Christian or someone who would scoff at Christianity or scoff at God or, or you know, sit in the seat of scoffers or stand on the path of sinners. This isn't like... This this isn't or David is not saying, hey, I'm going to stand in your way and you're not going to get to God. You know, I'm going to make sure you're 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 hearing the word of God. He's not saying that. He's saying we're standing in the same way, we're standing in the same same mindset as these sinners. So, as sinners or people who are ungodly, and so he says, a person who is blessed is a man who doesn't do these things, because right. one of the things that I find. In, in my ministry and in my life is that um, if you place yourself in in the seat of in the path of sinners or seat of scoffers or if you place yourself in 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 a lot of understanding with with people who are who are not of who, who are not don't have the understanding that we do of God eventually that will change your perspective 
on God. Eventually, it will cause your perspective to be different than it, than it was once before. And it's simply because you're, you're allowing yourself to be put into that situation. Um, maybe it's unwittingly. Maybe the whole point of... Um, and, and there's some people who, are, who have a good heart at the beginning and say, well, I want to minister to people. It's like um, people that, that go into, into, into bar ministry. They go into bars, and a lot of uh, people that are uh, previously alcoholics will go into bars or stand outside of bars and try to minister people to people coming in and going out. That is got to be a true call of God because you're in dangerous ground. And so you could have a heart to minister to people, and then eventually you are, you know, walking away from it and being affected instead of affecting people. We see that in the book of Galatians with uh, Peter, you know, get, being affected by the Judaizers changing things and saying, you, you know, you, you, you also need to follow the law to follow Jesus. And, and we know all of that. So that's a perfect picture of that, you know. And so we can have a good heart, a good start at it, and then just end up letting the, the, the opinions and thoughts of others begin to carry us away. And then we go on to the next yeah. one. We go on to the uh, next one. Just, just, just to piggyback a little bit off of that, Josh, um, I, 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 what came to mind while you were talking about it was what we hang out with, we become. Mm-hmm. You know, what we surround ourselves with is what we become, whether we try to or not. It's right. just I, I think our nature as human beings, we are not perfect. So we will lean towards the not perfect. You know, it's that that's usually the easier, easier way, so to speak. Yeah. Well, you know, well, um, well, it's, well, it's much easier to get a loan for a car than it is to save up for a car and pay for it cash. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just using these as analogies, obviously, but I'm just saying, you know, that's, that's just our nature. And if we continue to hang out with the, you know, with, you know, the scornful, those that sin against God that are, uh, um, if we're, if we're hanging, hanging out with Satanists all the time, what, what, what are, what are the people that we uh, are, that are believers we hang on? What are they going to say? You right. know, why are, why are you doing that? You know, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we should not go into the world and win these people to Jesus, but to get our counsel and to hang out with them on a regular basis, like I would do with you every week. Uh, that I don't. I don't think that's very wise. Well, and and it's it's well, like the, and, it's like the scripture says. It says that you know bad company corrupts good character. You right. Know? And so you you put yourself in in the company of bad you know in in the area of bad company, regardless right of your of your intent and of your heart. Eventually, sure, it's going to because it's easier. Yeah. I find it's easier for a person because the sin nature is so familiar. You know what I mean? It's so familiar. Yes. It is. It is. It is um, adverse to follow God for the human nature. It's adverse to follow God mm-hmm. and to turn to God. It's adverse. So we tend to then lean towards what's easier and what's easiest in every you know, in almost right. every situation of our life. We would rather mm-hmm. take the easy way than actually have to do the hard thing. And that's just human nature. That's just who we are. So in Mm -hmm. that scripture that says bad company corrupts good character, it's because it's easier to just flow with the stream than it is to flow against the stream. Right. So absolutely. So so it's one of those things where that's why it's so important to walk with God. It's adverse, but it's important to walk with God. And, yeah. you know, I, I think what, what I want to bring out is this next section. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, his law, and, and in his law he meditates day and night. Yes. Um, I want to I wanna just bring out a principle for those watching. And I know, Shannon, you know this principle. We've talked about it before. And, and you practice this principle, and I practice this principle. But it's... It's something to say um, when somebody says, I'm a Christian, and there's something different about saying someone saying I'm a Christian and someone actually living the Christian life. 
And the only way you're going to live the Christian life in the way that Psalm 1 is talking about is by daily meditating on the Word of God, setting aside time to spend time with God. God will, God will work through His Word. He will work through His people, and He will work through the sermons that you hear at, at, at your church. If you want to hear from God, He's going to do it from these three things, probably mostly in your prayer time, and in your Bible reading time privately, and then he uses his people to confirm those things. So I want to encourage, and I, I encourage in my church, my, my, my church family, every single Sunday we're together, when we're together, or if we're online like we do now for a while, I say, get into your Bible, read your Bible, do that. Because you want to know how to meditate on God's word? You get into his word. You want to know how to stay in walking in God and ministering in God? You stay in the word of God. You set aside mm -hmm. time. And, and listen, people don't usually, when, you, when you're coming to this fresh, people, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not a big proponent for, for Bible reading plans. I do do one, but I don't, I'm not a big proponent of pushing people, here, read a Bible reading plan. And there's, I won't go into that, I won't go into a lot of reasons, but there's a lot of pressure. You know, you, you know, you start a new believer on a Bible reading plan. Where do you start? Genesis. Genesis is 50 chapters. Usually they say three chapters a day. But what happens if you miss Monday? Then you got six chapters on Tuesday. And then you, what if you miss the weekend? Then you got nine chapters on Monday. So this is, I don't push Bible reading plans on new Christians. What I tell them to do is just, you know, set aside, if, if you have an appointment book, set aside time. Set aside uh, in your appointment book from 9 to 9.30 or 9 to 10 or 9 to 9.15. Color that in and say time with God. And you just sit down and you read for 15 minutes. No matter how many chapters you get, set a timer in your kitchen and go in your living room. Sit down and read the word for till that timer goes off. And you could get two, three chapters in 15 minutes. You can get a whole book if you're reading 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. You can probably read all of that in 15 minutes. But setting aside the time and, in, and just reading, just reading. Not, not studying and studying it out like we're doing here, but just getting right. it in your heart. And then you, right. and then you pray for a certain amount of time. Start sure. small and just build a habit. Start small yes. and build a habit. And then you know what will happen? God will begin to use his word to speak to your heart. So that's how you meditate daily on the word of God. I want to encourage those that are watching. And I want to encourage both of us to keep doing what we're doing. But, but spending the time is so important. That's how we stay yes. in the counsel of God. That's how we resist walking in the counsel of the ungodly. That's how we resist sitting in the seat of scoffers. That's how we resist being in the path of sinners. Being in the Word of God. It's so important. It's so important. It's, Very much so. It's like eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you didn't eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a few days, for a weekend, what would happen to you? You would be so weak and tired and very hungry. <laughs> what do you think happens to your spirit if you don't read the Word of God for right. two or three days? Same thing. Right. Your spirit gets weak and hungers after God, and you're, you're more apt sure. to go to what's easier. Right, it's yeah. easier to say yes to to the to the world and no to God, than it is to say yes to God and no to the world, because you yep. normally gravitate to what's it, what's what you're familiar with. What's easy, right? And so, that's my mini sermon. But but that's what you know. That's where I want to go with this, and and so that people understand what it actually means to delight on the law of the Lord and do it and do it. I'm going to add a little more to my sermon here. Do it with a joyful heart. You'll get out, you'll get more out of it if you do it with a joyful heart. If, if you sit there and say, oh, it's nine o'clock, got to read my Bible, <clears throat> you're not going to get anything out of it. But you, but you have to really come into this and say, I, I'm, I'm eagerly, prayerfully considering this and what God is going to do. I'm expecting God to speak. If you come into it like that, God will show up every time, every time. And it's yes. all about attitude. It's all about attitude, too. It can be about attitude, too. So what do you think about that? Yeah, you know, um, I once again, you gave this scripture to me just last 
yesterday, well, it have been last night for me, yesterday morning for you. <laughs> but uh, as, as I got into my study time this morning, after I got done with my, uh, with, with my walk, um, I couldn't help but uh, look up what meditate means. What does it mean to meditate? And it has a little bit more meaning than just uh, of reading our word. It actually means we, um, I was looking, like I said, I want to paraphrase a little bit. It's not going to be word for word. This is Shannon's paraphrase. But meditating means to ponder, to think about what it is you're reading. Uh, many times in the Psalms, and you'll find out as we go into Psalms, there will be a, a, a interlude or a selah. What that means is you need to stop and think about what you just read. You need to meditate on that at that time and see what God's speaking to you through what you just read. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's just listening. I call them downloads, uh, a download from God. He is ready to speak to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you you're going to hear some audible voice. Most likely you will not, but you'll hear him speaking to your heart. Mm -hmm. He will let you know exactly what it is he wants to tell you through that scripture. Pastor Joshua, we can sit here and study this and study this. We could come back tomorrow and do the same study, and we're probably going to have it speak to us. It, it has the same meaning, but it's going to speak to us different because we've had a different day. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. that's where the meditating comes in. Let it sit there and wash over your mind and your heart. You know, they're connected. The mind and the heart are connected. So we need to let the word wash over that. And as we meditate on it, as we ponder it, as we speak it. I had a good friend of mine uh, tell me one time when I was youth pastoring in Clinton. He said, Shannon, I, I started prayer meetings uh, for, for the youth group. And uh, I asked him to come because he was a good friend of mine. And he said, I want to, I like to pray the Psalms. I had never heard that before in my life. And he started giving me some, I mean, you can do it with any Psalm. You can just sit there and meditate on it. You can murmur it. You can ponder on it. And that's what, to me, that's what meditate means to continue to keep it before you. And if you're speaking it, if you're memorizing it, that's meditating on the word of the Lord. And when a time comes, that something's crashing down on you, like maybe even anxiety or some things that are coming against us even now in this time of COVID-19, these words will begin to rise up in you. As you have meditated on them before, they will come back to you and begin to wash over your mind and your heart. And that's where God does those things that you just, you can't explain. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he brings that word back to you. You know, and it's, I don't know, that's what I see meditating as, Josh. Yeah, and, and when and when you were talking about the 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 Psalms where it says Selah, and I, it doesn't say it in this one, but it says it in a lot of them. Selah right. traditionally was a musical pause, and musical pause was meant in any, in any song, there's always like a, there's always like a, like eight, eight or four bars of just music, and when they had, when David was writing these, and he said Selah, he would. There was a musical pause that was meant to to focus on and think about what you've just, what was just said or what was just sung, and and then then we bring that up to today, twenty twenty. We're at May sixteenth, twenty. You're on May sixteenth, right? Or are you May seventeenth now? Yes, still May sixteenth. Sixteen. Okay, so May sixteenth, twenty twenty. What do we have going around us? Clamor and noises about COVID-19. Clamor and noises about this and that and the other. And so many people are disinfected. So many people are dying. So many, we got all this going on, and yet we meditate on the Scripture. And when we meditate on the Scripture, we've got all this noise around us, and God wants us to listen for the still, small voice. <laughs> That's right. You know what I'm saying? All of this stuff. I do. And he says, listen my voice i i had brought up uh i had brought up a um you did you watch smallville when it was on no smallville was was a show it was clark kent's adolescence and, and growing up jonathan kent on one of the episodes kind of depicts this a little bit and i and I, of course the superman story is a it is a is a savior story but jonathan was helping clark he was getting his hearing. 
he was he was developing his his hearing and he he began to hear everything i mean everything was going on he was hearing screams he was hearing stuff and and so jonathan was trying to help him to hone in his hearing to fix you know to to control it and i never when i watched this i watched as a christian i'm like that's what god does jonathan what he did in the barn they went out to the barn he turned on the tractor he turned on the saw he turned on all the machinery in there and he said i want you to focus clark i want you he said i want you to focus he turned all this on and all this noise and he's starting to go crazy because all this noise and then jonathan says listen for my voice listen for my voice and he began to hone in and know his father's voice. That's what God mm -hmm. wants us to do. He wants us to know the father's voice. 